I tried Jalex nails for the first time at home. Keep watching if you want to see me go from this to this. What's up? If you're new here, my name is Selena. I share my life in my 20s post-grad. But today is kind of a fun video because I've been obsessively I will admit, I've been watching a bunch of like Gelex tutorials on how to do your nails. And one thing that I talk about on my channel a lot is balance and self-care and self-love and putting yourself first because you really can't pour out of an empty cup. So one way that I'm gonna start doing a self-care, hopefully we'll see, is by doing my own Gelex nails. I already do my own gel nails, but I haven't tried putting on gel extensions. So this is like a whole new level that I'm gonna tap into and I thought it would be fun to film it and also to kind of show you guys like the steps that I take and if everything turns out well then I'll obviously link everything down below and I'll also link a couple of tutorial videos that I got inspiration from that I'm watching and referring. There are also a couple of steps that I'm going to be doing that I haven't seen anyone do in their tutorials so make sure to watch for that as well and I hope that you'll enjoy today's video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe and let's get into it. These are all of the things that I bought or already owned that I'll be using in today's video. I'll make sure to link everything down below. First, I wanted to prepare all of the materials. I got all of these things off of Amazon. I needed to soak off the gel polish that I already had on my nails. So I used these lint-free towels that I got from Amazon and these nail clips. And I just set a timer for five minutes to let them soak. Moments of truth, let's see. After taking off the nail clips, I used a cuticle pusher to gently scrape off any gel polish. Wow, this is so satisfying. I continued this process on the rest of my nails. For the nails that needed more time to soak, I scraped off what I could and then I just put the nail clip back on. Then I used this buffer to take out the rest of the polish. Then I used this cuticle remover and applied it to my nails using the lint-free wipes from earlier. Then I gently pushed back my cuticles using this cuticle pusher that I got off of Amazon. Then I repeated the process two more times. This time I added the cuticle remover directly to my nails. You want to continue this process until you begin to see that when you push back your cuticles, there's no more dry skin coming off. It's kind of a tedious process, but if you care about having healthy nails, it's completely worth it. You also want to make sure that you're not only pushing back your cuticles, but you're also scraping off any dry skin or cuticle that might be on the sides of your nails as well. And then I cleaned my nail beds using an alcohol wipe. Using the other side of the cuticle pusher, I cleaned under my nails and made sure to scrape up any leftover cuticles that might be on my nail beds. You want to make sure that you're angling the cuticle pusher and kind of using a circular motion when you get to the corners of your nail bed to make sure that you're just gently pushing and all of that dry skin will come out. Then I used this cuticle clipper to gently remove any dry excess skin, aka those cuticles that we pushed back earlier it should now be a lot easier to see because it will literally look like white skin. Make sure that you take your time with this angle the clipper so that you're able to get into those corners very easily without cutting yourself. This can be really dangerous and honestly really scary and it's okay to skip this part if you don't feel comfortable doing it because it's better to not cut yourself in order to prevent infection. Here I'm doing my dominant hand. I use this buffer to rest my hand on. Always make sure you use an anchor and you can always use your dominant hand and move that around. Just anchor your non-dominant hand and that will help with precision. Now we're gonna size the gel tips to make sure that they fit our nail from sidewall to sidewall. This one was a little big so I just used a nail file to file down the edges until it perfectly fit onto my nail. I just repeated this process for all of my nails. Yes, this was a little bit tedious but it's really helpful to have all of your nails laid out for the next part. 
you want to make sure the gel tip matches your nail bed shape and fits perfectly without having to apply any pressure. Once your nails are all laid out, you're going to roughen up the inside using a nail buffer or a nail file. Some people will use an electric file, which I will also link on my Amazon storefront because I think I'm going to use that next time since I think it will make this process go by a lot faster and a lot easier, but you don't have to invest in an electric file. As you can see, I used a nail file and it worked just as good. And you wanna make sure that you get this step right and do this before you prepare your nails so that you don't have any powder or residue on your nails when you apply the gel tips. Then I buffed out my nails using this nail buffer that I got off of Amazon in order to roughen them up so that the gel tips would apply better and last longer. I also cleaned off all of the residue using the lint-free wipes and some acetone. In this step, I applied sunblock to my hands and I also put on some UV protection gloves to help protect my skin from the UVs while I cure my nails using the LED light. I applied this nail prep dehydrator to my nails in order to remove any oils that might inhibit the gel tips application process. Next, I applied nail primer that creates this sticky tacky layer on your nail that will help adhere the gel tips to your natural nails. I also went ahead and added a layer of this primer to the back of the gel tips as well. Next, I applied a base coat to my nails, making sure that I applied a very light layer. Then I dipped the nail brush in some acetone and cleaned off any excess gel that got onto my skin. If you leave any gel on your skin, this will cause your nails to prematurely peel off. I then cured the base coat for 45 seconds. Next, I'm using that same base coat gel polish as the nail glue for my nails. Also making sure to apply it to the back of the gel tip and scraping off any excess onto the end to ensure that there's enough nail glue so that the gel tip will adhere completely to my nail bed. I then flashed cured it under this LED lamp for about 10 to 15 seconds. I then continued to repeat this process to all of my nails until I completed one hand. When applying the gel tip, make sure to start from the end of the nail bed and then pushing forward to the tip of your nail. Once you've completed your entire hand, make sure to cure it under an LED light for at least 60 seconds. Then I use this nail file to file off any excess gel that might have spilled out during the adhesion process. Next, I buffed out the gel tips in order to roughen them up and prepare them for the nail polish. I also used a nail file to clean up the edges and also roughen up the gel tips further. I also used this nail file to clean up the edges around the cuticles and to really blend the gel tip into my natural nail. I used this cute pink color by Mameda as the base coat, 100% inspired by Michelle. I'll make sure to link her down below. She has amazing Gelex videos. Totally use her tutorial to learn how to do this. She's amazing. I then used that same nail brush from earlier, dipped it in acetone to clean up any excess gel that may have gotten onto my skin. Once all the nails were painted, I just cured it for 60 seconds under my LED lamp. I then added this second base layer by this nail polish that I found on Amazon. I used number 22, it's this really cute light pink color. Make sure to brush it on really lightly. You don't wanna have any thick layers of gel. And as long as you just let it sit for about 30 seconds before you cure it, all the gel will level out and there won't be any streaks left on your nail. Then I cured it for 60 seconds and used a nail file to clean up the edges. After so many layers of gel polish, sometimes it can really build up, so the nail file just helps clean that up. 
Then I use the lint-free towelettes with some rubbing alcohol to clean up any residue. It's time for nail art. I use this French white nail polish by Beatles to create a French tip using this method that I learned on TikTok and also from Michelle's tutorials. The nail art was the most satisfying and also most difficult part of this entire process. I swear I redid my French tips like five different times, but it's totally worth it. And once you get it down and you do some more practice, it will get a lot easier. I cleaned up the edges and also cleaned up any mistakes that I made with the white gel polish before I flash cured it for about 15 seconds under this LED lamp. Once I achieved my desired look, I cured it for 60 seconds. I used a lint-free towel to wipe off any excess polish from the tip which made it a lot easier to get a clean line when drawing on my nail. When filling in the rest of the tip after you've completed your outline, you want to make sure to take your time and create really light strokes. You don't want to have any lumps on your finger. You want it to all be evenly coated. And then just continue this process until you've completed your nail art for an entire hand. Once you've completed all of your nail art and flash cured all of your nails, you're going to add a top coat and you're going to cure it for 60 seconds, two to three times. I honestly think they came out pretty well and I will say that they've lasted me three weeks so far. I 100% recommend if you want to try these at home, you should definitely do it. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe and let me know down in the comment section. With all that said, I will see you all in the next video. Thank you